welcome to Hitchhog Hollow. Today I have a new innovation to show you. I'm going to be showing you the Concord and Knight fill-in papers. The pack comes with four different fill-in papers and they're both double-sided with coordinating patterns on the back. You'll notice they have these empty flowers which we're going to fill in with a two-step stencil that comes as part of the package as well. You can also use this completely separately so we're going to show you how to go through that and then we're going to finish it off with a sentiment from the matching stamp set. This is the card that we're going to produce. We're going to produce this lovely uh, Aloha uh, flower in here with the coordinating paper. And then we're going to create this lovely complementing sentiment. So let's get started. I've been so excited to show you this new release. It actually came out last month from Concord and Ninth. It's called Fill In Pattern Paper. I've got the matching stamps, which is called Aloha Friend stamp set. So I'll be using some of that. And the paper itself has these fill in stencils. So if I take this out of the packet and you can see it's still in its packaging. So we can explore it together. I've got some really fun ideas for us to use on this paper. I'm going to slide it out here. So it has gaps in the paper. Each piece of paper is double sided and there is some different designs in here. So we have a black and white with the stripes on the back. We have one that just has leaves around it with the leaves on the back. And we also have this panel here. So it's got the centers and it's this lovely strip down the middle. And on the back we have the lines. And we also have this one with the black and the green and on the back we have the black and the green as well. So these white panels are filled in by these fill-in stencils and the fill-in stencils are also a layered stencil. So you get two in the packet, one for the centre pieces so they would line up like this roughly and we'll line them up properly of course as we start using them and then they also line up on all the other little flowers as well and then once you've done that you layer this over the top so again I'm just going to rotate till we get to the right places so you can see there how that fits on there as well so this is how we're going to fill in the paper I think today I'm going to use this one with the center panel and we can use the center panel as a feature in our card so I'll just pop these to the side and I keep all of my 6x6 six six pattern paper in either the larger Avriel envelopes, although I did recently invest in some of these smaller, they're not quite as thick but they're great for paper, they're 6x6 six six size, I keep all sorts of things in them and they keep all of your paper and offcuts together. So I'll be sure to link both of those options below this video so that you can check those out as well. And I'm going to be using the Abandoned Coral both in the distress regular Distressing and the Distress Oxide. They're completely interchangeable if you wanted to use different shades of pink, you could do that too. Don't feel that you uh, need to have the Distress Oxides to be able to use these pieces. You could also use any inks that blend. You may, you'll see on the screen right now about the Barber's brushes. I did a review between these, the Clarity brushes and the Ranger Ink Tool. I kind of went a bit um, harsher on the Ranger Ink Tool just to show you those solid edges that can be really frustrating. But I love blending with these tools. So I'm just making sure that I have all my stencils the right way around. And I can slide out my larger one first of all. And I'm just going to use a little bit of the Tamiya masking tape to hold this down once I have it in the right place. And you'll see that it's over these three smaller flowers and the two larger ones as well. I like the Tamiya because I can stick this onto a piece and I don't find I have any residue issues. So let's pop it down onto there and I am also have it on a Teflon mat in case I go over with any of my blending. I'm going to start with the regular ink and then we'll use the Distress Ink over the top. I'm going to just brush off a little bit on the top here and then I'm going to start just very lightly blushing in these areas because we want these to be a little bit paler and then we'll have the darker areas with the oxide and as I say you could use two colors of distress ink the hero arts inks they blend really nicely you could use uh, the my favorite things hybrid will blend as well the uh, alter new inks there's so many different options you have with regards to blending so once you've done that we can lift this up like so and you can see there how you've already got the start of those lovely pinky shades then we can take our darker one 
So for the darker shades, I'm going to be using the Distress Oxide just to give a little bit of contrast. Again, I'm going to pick up some of the ink and I'm going to load it up a little bit more this time. I'm still just going to dab off on the top there and just work in the circular motion. And I'm doing a very light touch because I just want it to be a multi-tonal, is what I'm trying to say, so that uh, well, you could add maybe some yellows and some oranges, there are lots of different options in regards to colours. But I want this to be to really pop with those coral colours. I love a coral card. So it's as easy as that. So now our pieces are finished. And you can see there how beautiful that looks. I can lift it up a little bit for you to see how great that really does look once you've stenciled in there as well. So let's move this to the side and now we can get going on assembling a card from it. Now I want to pick out this centre panel. I already have a piece of Nina Solar White which I've pre-cut. It's a long 8.5 by 11 cut lengthways. So I can fold that in half and I can firm that crease up with my bone folder and I use the EK Success one. It's a lot less expensive than the Teflon one and I find it works just as well. I'm also just going to use a baby wipe just to clean off that surface in case any distressing is on there. I don't want it to colour my white cardstock. I have my cutter peed here to cut my strip and of course I've got a nice straight edge to cut against. I'm going to start by cutting around about an inch of a quarter off of each side and we can work from there. Again, I'm going to cut an inch and a quarter off of this side. And I'll take my off cuts to the bin there. We're also going to need to cut a little bit off to make it fit lengthways. And I'm just going to cut a little bit off each end. So to make it fit, we need it to be at five and a half. And again, I have a ruler on here. I can make sure it fits perfectly. I'm also going to mat it on a piece of black cardstock. So to do that, I'm going to stick this down onto my black. And the black happens to be half eight and a half by eleven because I made a card base out of it the other day. So this will fit on there perfectly. And I'm going to cut a quarter of an inch off of each side, which again happens to be where this yellow panel ends. So I'm going to line it up with the yellow panel and that's where I'm going to cut. And I'm going to do the same on this end. I just want to check my width. Didn't press down firmly enough. There we are. Just a tiny little snip there. And I want to just offer this up onto my card. So I'm going to cut just a tiny bit more off of that black panel, but I just like the idea of that black framing up on the white panel underneath. And of course, we'll add an Aloha Friends sentiment as well. great. does overhang just a little bit but I'm going to line that up once it's already on the card. So I've got some of my big tape roll here. I'm just going to snip myself a piece. I'm just going to leave myself a little bit of room at the top and the bottom because I know I'm going to need to snip some of that off. And the backing on these peels off really nice and easily as well. So again, I think it goes that way. I think it uh, sort of droops in that direction. And the great thing is I can then just open up my trimmer. I can line up my card edge and I'm just gonna run my rotary cutter along making sure it snips off those bits. There's a little bit of the paper left. 
and it just seems to have skipped a tiny little bit and that's just because of the thickness in the foam so that's how our card looks which I think it's absolutely beautiful but I do think it needs a little bit of a sentiment on there just to finish it off so I already have a piece of spare Nina Solar White and we have this lovely Aloha so we have Aloha we have Thanks we have Inspiring and we have Fabulous and you can pop them into these boxes as well so let's peel off our backing piece and definitely keep these pieces you'll see me use these backing pieces all the time for stencils and all sorts of different things and I'm not entirely sure which box these fit into so let's play around and have a look so it looks like they fit into this one just here and I'm just going to stamp it in two separate uh, goes I'm going to get rid of this stamp that I was using earlier I'm going to pop in my piece of Nina I'm using my My Favourite Things Hybrid Black ink, which I absolutely adore. And I pop my Fabulous down, close my lid. And on the screen right now, you'll also see a tutorial for how to use, there's 10 top tips on using the Tim Holtz platform. I'll also link up the 10 top tips for using a Misty or a Stamp Perfect, as well as how to do the foam. So you'll see those will cycle through your screen. Uh, in just a moment just with some links on the top there so I'm going to quite generously ink up my stamp because I really want it to be quite a solid punchy sentiment and I'm going to press that down and I am going to do it a second time just to make it really nice and solid maybe even a third time let's see how it goes so there's our second and I am just going to firm that up with a third. Like so. And I'm going to wipe that off with my stamp chamois, which is just to the side here. And it's recently had a clean, so it's nice and luminous and green again. And we can take this off, and I'm going to use this frame around it. So let's peel the frame off and we can add that on too. So excuse if my head comes in, but I just want to make sure that we are lined up with a reasonably even border because nothing looks worse than when you border something up and it's not quite right. So there we go. And I think actually I'm going to stamp the border using the same, the coral that we used inside of there. And again, I'm just going to make sure, because these are sticky, they're brand new stamps. And I'm going to use the Distress Oxide Abandoned Coral to stamp out the border just to tie it all together. And I'm going to firm that up just with a second stamp. If you have issues with photopolymers, again, I'll place the link, it should come up in the corner of your screen, of how to condition your photopolymers, maybe for some more of the solid ones in particular, when you might have issues stamping them out when they're brand new. Maybe they've lost their stick and they don't stick to your stamping platform. There's all sorts of tips in there of how to use that. Because this has the pigment in it, so it'll take a little bit longer to dry, I'm just going to use my heat tool to a heat setter. like so and now again I'm going to use my cutter pee to cut it out this paper trimmer comes in two sizes you may have seen me use this lots before and I'll link both sizes in the description for the video and of course in the related blog post always check out the blog post there's extra pictures and you're always free to share them or pin them uh, we'll always have some extra information full supply lists and all sorts of other things. You may even find the odd giveaway in there, so definitely check out the linked blog post, which is in the description underneath this video. If you're on a mobile device, you'll need to click a little downward arrow in the bottom right, and if you're on a desktop, you'll need to click that show more button to be able to find it. So now we can pop in our piece. Now I don't want to cover up everything completely. I may even change, I think, 
and I think we'll actually have a sideways card. Now that is the beauty, of course, of having the flexibility when we're making our own cards to do whatever looks best. So I do have some foam pieces that I already cut. And I'm now going to just stick that on. And so there you can see, so it's still a side open card. You've got that beautiful, strong, fabulous on there and our stenciled flowers. I love how we've got that lovely strong effect on the card. Now on your screen right now you'll be able to see some pictures we took of the cards. You'll also see that I add a little bit of bling afterwards with some sequins and you'll also uh, be able to see some buttons that have the subscribe button and some related videos as well. So thank you so much for joining us today for this fun look at the new Aloha fill in paper from Concord and Ninth. Something completely new and a little bit different which I always love and I will see you again very soon. Happy stamping! Bye!